Atomic Blonde is a new spy action thriller directed by David Leach and stars Charlize Theron, James McAvoy, Toby Jones, John Goodman and Sophia Vitella. Now going to this film, I actually was looking forward to seeing it, um, although that being said my excitement was dampened quite significantly by the reviews. I mean the reviews weren't terrible, but a lot of people were saying that it was kind of just okay, it was very kind of a lukewarm positive response where people were saying uh, it, it was cool, there were some things I like, but it wasn't that great. So I went into this film with tempered expectations and coming out, I've got to be honest, I was kind of disappointed. Now, don't get me wrong, there were some things to really like about this movie. There was a lot of things that I did really like, I thought were really great, but there was a lot of stuff that really didn't do it for me and I don't think was that good at all. But it starts me off with positives as I always do performances. I think everyone in this film did a really great job, namely Charlie Theron. I think Charlie Theron's so great and obviously we saw what she did as Furiosa in Mad Max Fury Road and here she just kicks ass. She's so great. Because sometimes with actors you see them trying to do some kick-ass action hero role and you just don't buy it and it just doesn't work but with Charlie Theron you just buy it. She just really sells the physicality of the role and you watch her and you can tell she did the majority of her stunts by herself because you can see when you're watching it that is her and she did a really great job and she was a badass um there wasn't really a whole lot to her character but as far as being a really great really cool badass kick-ass spy she did an incredible job and i really liked her in that role and although i don't really like the film she was in all that much i do really want to see her back in maybe a sequel or a different kind of film where they could improve on what they did here in like a better sequel and to see her back in that role I really would like to see her come back because I think she did a really great job in that role and I really liked her and the rest of the cast James McAvoy of course he was really great he's kind of great in everything he's in and he's got that kind of wicked kind of charm uh, to his performance here where he's playing this kind of tough nut badass but there's a kind of a tongue-in-cheekness to it in a way and you know he always puts a smile on your face he was really great um Sophia Patella I really liked as well she's kind of really underutilized she's not really in the movie that much at all which is kind of a shame she kept just, just disappearing and she really was only in it a little bit but she did a really great job and so yeah the performance is all around I think everyone did a really great job in this movie and also just the whole visual style and flair of this film. Directed by David Leach, who was one of the co-directors of the original John Wick, and it very much had that same kind of visual style and flair to it, like the first John Wick, where it had that kind of... John Wick, you know, the first film, it had that greenish hue to it, it had a kind of graphic novel, kind of almost video game style to it. And this movie had a similar kind of thing, where it was kind of like hues of blue and just neon kind of lights, and just, you know, it had that cool 80s style and feel to it and I loved the visuals, I loved how this film was shot, I think it looked great, really cool and stylish from a visual standpoint and of course the action, you know this film isn't overstuffed and overloaded with action, I think you know a lot of people wanting this to be the female John Wick, it's kind of that but it kind of isn't that, you know she kind of is the female John Wick in a certain way but then the film isn't really like John Wick at all, it's more of a spy film, it's more of this kind of conspiracy, espionage, spy thriller and I'll touch on that a bit more in a minute but as far as the action is concerned we really get three big main action sequences and they were really great and they just got better and better and particularly the final action sequence towards the end of the film because I wasn't loving the film all that much but as soon as we got that final big third action set piece that big action sequence which is almost like 10 minutes of this just long uh, uncut sequence it just blew me away I was like okay yeah I like this movie a little bit more now that that's kind of that's kind of helped uh, bump it up for me even though the, the rest of the film kind of didn't really do it for me the action sequences were absolutely incredible David Leach you can tell his strong point really is action sequences which is kind of weird why they would shy away from that so much in this film and why they only had three big action sequences because the action sequences were mind-blowingly incredible they were extraordinary really great stuff but it was kind of like three big action sequences and that was it and it really baffles me why they would focus so much on the story side of things and not just make it a full-blown action movie you know a lot of the time i like films where there's a much bigger emphasis on character and story and it's not just over stuff of action but i think this is the case where there should have been much more of an emphasis on the action because the action was the strongest part of the film but there really wasn't that much action at all 
But those three big action sequences I talked about were really great, particularly that final one that was all made to look at least like it was in one long, uncut kind of 10 minute take. It was really incredible. But going on to my negatives, and as much as I really like the performances, I really love the action sequences we got, and I think it was really cool and stylish from a visual perspective, as far as the story was concerned, it just really didn't do it for me. I just found the story kind of boring and it's weird because it's told in this really overly kind of convoluted complex way where it's like it's supposed to be like they're trying to make this kind of really intriguing kind of conspiracy espionage spy thriller but it is just not interesting or engaging at all and even though it's told in this really overly complicated way it's really when you think about it quite a simple straightforward story it's basically the, the, the cliche thing that's in so many spy movies is there's there's a list with people's names on it. They don't want it to get out for the agents' covers to be blown. There's a list, and people are trying to get that list, and everybody wants that list. That's not necessarily a problem because a lot of spy movies have that, where it's the MacGuffin, the thing they're trying to get. Even Skyfall has that kind of drive with a list of the names they're trying to get. But in a film like Skyfall, that's a very small part, a very small element to the story of that film. In this film. The entire film, the entire story revolves around this list that people want and it just got really tiring and just really kind of worn out really quick because the whole movie, the entire story is just about there's a list and people want the list. I just didn't find it interesting really. Uh, it kind of was at first I suppose but as it went on and they just kept just just doing this same thing over and over again it's like I, I just really don't care it's like and they tried to make it like this really cool conspiracy espionage spy thriller but it ultimately just wasn't interesting at all because it just was there was a list and people wanted it and that was it and they just decided to tell it in the most overly complex convoluted way you could possibly imagine to the point where there's times when you're thinking wait what is going on what's happening now who's the traitor what's what's you know and they try to do these cool twists at the end of the film where it, it just really didn't work for me. But another one of my big problems is, although after that final third action sequence I talked about, I was like, okay, I'm liking this a whole lot more. It then went on for like another 30 minutes after that. I'm like, why? I could have wrapped it up shortly after that. And the final act is just, where they're trying to resolve all the, all the drama and give you all these big twists and shocking surprises. It just really didn't work for me because there was like three different twist endings. It was almost almost felt like they couldn't decide which one to go with, so they just put all three in there. And it really kind of didn't make sense. It was almost like three different consecutive twist endings. People actually got up and left when it felt like it ended the first time or when it felt like it ended the second time. People actually thought the movie was coming to an end and got up and left. And then it just kept going on. And it, had the, it almost felt like we had these three different twist endings back to back. And I just, I don't understand why they did that. It just it just really didn't work. Another problem in terms of how they told the story is that it often cut back and forth between what was going on in the main story and then after everything that had happened after the fact with Charlie's being uh, interviewed or interrogated and that kind of took away all tension because when she's in this perilous action scene we know she's not going to die and not going to get hurt because we we see her after the fact in the interrogation room so you know it wasn't a massive problem for me but I don't understand why they decided to tell the story in that way because as I said, it took away all tension. There was moments during these action sequences, that third one I was talking about, we're like, oh my god, where the window got blown in, but then we're like, oh no, she's fine, because we know she's talking to the guys afterwards, so yeah, I don't understand why they did that. And lastly, I know it seems like I'm bashing on this film, it's really all boils down to that one big problem for me in terms of, you know, the story not really working for me, but there was another thing, the music, I liked all the music, but this, I didn't know what, what they were thinking, like every two seconds we get some 80 songs just blaring out really loud I'm like I don't know if it was just the screen I was in but the music was so loud in this film every two seconds whenever we got an action scene or sometimes when nothing was really happening at all we got this music that was just blaring really loud I'm like why why are they blaring this really loud 80s music okay I get it it's set in the 80s and it gave it that 80s feel I suppose but every two seconds they would just randomly blare out these songs I'm like why is this happening it doesn't make any sense but Anyway, that's my negatives on the film over. I did like this movie. Um, I don't know if I'd recommend it. Like, it, it's difficult because the few things I liked, I really liked and thought were really good. But then there was a lot about this movie that I just didn't like and for me didn't work. But I think overall, even though the negatives probably outweighed the positives, 
The few positives I had were stronger, I think, and made more of an impression than the negatives I had. So overall, I'm just going to give this movie a three out of five stars. And there we have it, guys. I have a review of the new Charlie Theron spy film, Atomic Blonde. Have you seen the film yet? And if so, what do you think about it? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, if you like this and you haven't already, be sure to click subscribe to see more. If you missed my last film review, be sure to go ahead and click over here to catch up on my last film review, or perhaps down here to catch up on another of my recent videos. But with that said, I've been Darius Sullivan. I'll see you next time.